Hey, welcome back. This is this episode is going to focus on the board class, which is by far the most uh, well. It's the longest class in the program for sure, and it was definitely the hardest to write and the one I've probably spent. I want to say a hundred times more uh, more hours on a hundred times more time than uh, than any other class in the program. Scroll down, you can see it's 1,412 lines of code, and not a lot of it is uh, boilerplate code, so a lot of it is really necessary, and when I first set out to write a chess program, I, I had no idea that it was going to be this uh, be this challenging to do, that there would be so many problems I would have to overcome. So, of course, I'm definitely not going to try to cover the entire board class in one video. I'm actually going to focus on just one function in this video. And if you look over here in the members view, that's going to be this get possible moves function. So you can see, oh, I actually wrote some Java doc for it. So it says this method will return a set based, hmm, a set, I ignore the word based, will return a set containing the possible moves a given piece in the given position could make. This method completely disregards the legality of these moves, however, and so its results, results must be filtered by the isLegalMove method, or by simply calling getLegalMoves. So what this function does is, I had to start with the basics. I had to, it basically accepts a piece that you pass into it in a coordinate. So let's say you pass into it a pawn in the middle of the board. And what it will then do for you is tell you all the possible places that pawn could go. But it ignores, it says it ignores the legality of these moves. So it's going to return four values for the pawn. It's going to return the two squares in front of it and the two uh, adjacent diagonal squares. And then the idea is once we get that set of points, we'll then filter them through a function that determines whether or not a move is legal based on the, the circumstance at hand. So it's probably best explained just by showing you the, the function itself. So first what we do is we determine the, the type of the piece that was passed in. You can see the, the input parameter here. We determine what type of piece it is and we name that variable type. Then we define a set of coordinates, name it result set, and of course we in instantiate it as just an empty set at this point. And a lot of the, fun all, actually almost all of my functions in this class that return sets of coordinates, um, name it result set. So I kind of have my own naming convention going on and it's it's been really helpful for me. So just a little bit of a convenience, I grab two uh, integer values for the x coordinate of the start point and the y coordinate of the start point. So this these first four lines are just a lot of housekeeping, getting object handles and getting ready to start doing the lifting. And now we just we just iterate through all the possibilities. So the first block is if the piece type is a pawn. Well, pawns are weird because they can only move one direction. So what I did is I separated it. You can see here we have if piece type is white. This is basically asking, is it a white piece that we're talking about? And then down here we have, is it a black piece that we're talking about? And the code is slightly different for both of them. Because white pieces, from the perspective of, of the player, are going to be moving up the board. Whereas black pieces are going to be moving down the board. So what we do, we say if y equals 7. So what this is asking, if you can imagine, if it's a white pawn and y equals 7. And let me go ahead and run the program here while I try to explain this. The other thing you have to keep in mind is that the Java coordinate system, the top left is the origin. So if the y value equals 7, what that means is, and I'll just give the video a second to unblur what that means is that what I'm asking is is the pawn in its starting position right so a pawn a white pawn whose y value is 7 is going to be any of these pawns here 
So if I switch back, I'm going to add a coordinate to my result set. And that coordinate is going to be um, so it's going to have an x and a y value. The x value is going to be the same as the pawn because the pawn isn't changing which file it's on. It's not moving left or right. But the new y value is going to be y minus 2, meaning the pawn can move forward two spaces. So if I remove this line of code here, pawns in my program would only be able to move one space forward no matter where they were. So, so if now we have if y is not equal to 8, so I'm trying to think of if y was equal to 8, excuse me, it's been a while since I wrote this. Hmm. See, because I don't even see how a white pawn could be on the 8th rank, or in this case the 1st rank. But anyway, we're going to add a new coordinate in that coordinate. I think that what I was trying to do was um, exclude the possibilities of promotion, but in that case this should have been a 1, not an 8. Or maybe I'm just completely missing something here. But we're adding to the result set a coordinate that is not moving left or right, as you can see by this x value, it's staying the same. And that is... Oh, of course! I'm... No, no, this still should have been a 1, if y is not equal to 1. Anyway, we're saying this coordinate is basically allowing the pawn to move forward one space. The y minus 2 is saying, okay, add a coordinate to the results where the pawn does not move left or right but moves forward two spaces. This line of code is saying add a coordinate to the result where the pawn does not move left or right but moves forward one space. And now we have if x equals 1 Okay, so this is saying if the pawn is all the way on the left, add, add a coordinate that is, hmm, it's best explained by showing. If the pawn is here, add this coordinate to the set. So get possible moves, if I ran it on this pawn, it would return these three squares as values. The reason you're not seeing all of those is because these results are being filtered through get legal moves. But what it would not return are these values over here, right? Because I didn't, if I didn't make sure that I wasn't adding uh, zero values or negative values to this function, the, all of the other programs would completely wig out because they assume that they're going to receive legal values. So here we have our our same um, the same idea. If the pawn is all the way on the right side of the board don't add any of these values. Don't don't add 9... Th Actually, if we're counting from the down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Don't add the point 9, 6, which would be this one right here, if there was a tile here. Don't return that in the result set because the other classes aren't going to know what to do with it. And then here... Hey. Yeah, I was. Sorry. Why are you sneaking up on me? I so what this part is saying, if x isn't 1 or 8, so if the pawn's in the middle, go ahead and add both of these points because they're both going to be points that are actually on the board. So what we're doing here is we're just making sure that we're not returning points that aren't even on the board. So if we scroll down, if it's black, so if the if the pawn is black, then instead of subtracting from the y value, we're actually going to be adding. Because if you can imagine, if 1 is the point at the very top, if we continue to add to that, so this is 1, this is going to be 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to be adding to the this pawn's y value. Add 1, add 2. So, and I just... Sorry, I clicked somewhere else. So for the black pieces, it's the same logic and the same code. It's just the y values are all adding instead of subtracting. And then we have this line of code, which you'll see um, six times in this function. And it's remove illegal coordinates from set. 
So that's just me being careful in case I did mess up and have a point in there that maybe has a value of 9 or value of 0. This function will remove any of those. And I guess I'll go ahead and show the implementation of that function. Remove illegal coordinates from a set. So it's pretty short, as you can see. It, um, it iterates through the set you pass into it. And then for each value, it just asks, is x less than 1? Or is x greater than 8? Or is y less than 1? Or is y greater than, the eight, greater than 8? And if any of those things are true for a particular point, it removes that point from the set and then returns the set. So basically, it throws away any points that have zeros or nines or anything or anything beyond that. If I can switch back to get possible moves here. Okay, so on to the rooks. For rooks, we call so we add a set. The way you add a set of points, I mean a set of objects to a set of objects is with the add all method. So a result set is going to add all and what we pass into that is a set of points. And that set is when we call the function that I wrote get all points on same row. So as you can imagine a rook can move anywhere a rook can move to any point that is on the same row or the same on the same rank or the same file as it. So get all points on same row, get all points on same column. Add all of those, remove any illegal coordinates, and return the result set. Go ahead and show you get all points on same row. It's it's not the most glamorous function get all points on same row okay so we have it's a short one we have a result set that's we make it an empty set uh, int y equals the argument coordinate dot y so get all points on the same row as this point that we've passed in well the y value is not going to change so what we do is for the values, what this does is it runs this line of code with x equaling 1, with x equaling 2, with x equaling 3, and so on through 8. So what this basically does is it adds the points 1, y, 2, y, 3, y, 4, y, 5, y, 6, y, 7, y, and 8, y. And no matter what y is, this remains true. The get all points on same column function, as you can see, it simply reverses the roles of x and y. Instead of the x value changing each time we pass through, it's the y value that changes because, of course, we're going up and down a column. If I go back to get legal move, get possible moves, excuse me, here we go. That's it for rooks. And now for bishops, it's the same idea. Get all points in a positive diagonal line and get all points in a negative diagonal line. And these functions here, positive and negative diagonal line functions, they return uh, a really large number. I think something like 100 points because they ignore the, the boundaries of keeping it constrained between 1 and 8. That's why I actually wrote this remove, uh, remove illegal coordinates. Actually, they, don't, they, do not, they do not return illegal values because inside these functions themselves, um, they, f they, they filter their own values. So say so they run the remove illegal coordinates function before they even return a result set. And then for this, um, I've been ignoring this function called remove coordinate from set start point result set. All this is doing is we don't want to, we don't want to draw a green square on the tile that we are. right? So I click on this pawn. It's not drawing this green because it's not a possible move. But if I were to run the function, uh, get all points on same row for the rook, this is on the same row as itself, but we don't want it to be drawn. So that is the idea behind removing the, the coordinate from the set. Um, knights, you would think that knights would be difficult because, oh, they can jump over pieces and, oh, they, you know, they move weirdly. But really it's not because if you think about a knight, 
I'll switch over to my program and get a knight into the middle of the board. Okay, you see these six green, eight, these eight green squares. A knight can only move to those eight, and so every knight, all you have to do is find out what those eight values are, and they're very finite. You, to get this one, you subtract two from the x value and subtract one from the y value. To get this one, I've subtracted one from the x value and subtracted two from the y value, and so on for all of these. It's very finite, it's a very, very definite algorithm to run. You just figure out what they all are, and then you remove any values. So for this one, I'll move. So for this knight, when I run get possible moves, it's returning a point here, a point here, a point here, and a couple up here. But then when we remove illegal coordinates from set, we're, it's actually returning this value as well. We're narrowing it down to only the legal moves. And that's what the next video will be devoted to, is determining how a move is legal. For instance, it knows that it can't move to a piece that's occupied by a member of its own team, so it's not highlighting that one as green. But the method we're looking at, get possible moves, does return this square right here. So, moving on from the knight, as you can see, we're just adding these eight, those eight tiles. We're subtracting either one or two from the x or y values to get that L-shaped move. And then we remove the illegal coordinates. So if it's a queen, queens are quite simple. If you've already made rooks and bishops, you just instead of adding just the rook moves or just the bishop moves, you add them both, remove the illegal coordinates, remove the start coordinate, and return the set. That's what all four of these lines of code do, respectively. So with the king, pretty simple. How many possible places can a king go if he were to make his way to the center of the board for illustration purposes? Okay, how many is that? That's eight tiles. We we add or subtract one from the x and or y values and do that all possible combinations and that's how we get the king's move. And then of course we remove the values that would be off of the board. So king, pretty simple. So we add these eight finite values, either adding or subtracting one from y. We remove the, the illegal coordinates and we return the set. And then so what's the idea behind why can't I just add to the result set and then return it at the end of the function? The idea behind returning it now, once I say return result set, it's not going to go on and ask, well, is it a queen? Is it a king? So if it's a pawn, and I run the pawn function, and then it returns the result set here, it's done. It's not going to then go on and ask, is it a rook? Is it a bishop? Because I, you can imagine how much time that would waste, because this function has to run... Uh, a lot of times, every time, let's see, every time a move is made, it runs for all, all 32 pieces, right? Because it has to determine whether a team is in check or not. So, and when you, every time you click on a piece, this function runs. So this function runs a lot of times, and so anything I can do to make it run faster, I will. Um, that does it for this function. And for this video, next video I will run over the, uh, the function that determines whether or not a move is legal. And it just returns a true or false value. So that's it for this video. See you next time.